Douglas, all right, brother, here's the compressed version of the 15 minute silent video. So two lessons ago, we talked about augmented versus diminished chords, how they're both, both based on uniform intervals. So augmented chords are nothing but major thirds. So E to G sharp, G sharp to B sharp, B sharp to E. If you put the E in the bass, you can hear it. So the consequence is that they will invert themselves every four frets. So if I take a D major, but I sharpen the A, so I get A sharp, D, F sharp. Okay, every four frets. Conversely, diminished seventh chords are based exclusively in minor thirds. And all other triads are combinations of major and minor thirds, which is why these are so special. So E to G, G to B flat, B flat to D double flat, D double flat to E. That's an E diminished. So diminished seventh chords, here's an E diminished seventh. Repeat every three frets, following the path of a minor third. You already knew that. But we talked about a, another special quality of augmented chords, which is that if you take a minor triad, this C minor in this case, and I just lower the root half a step, suddenly I'm playing a B augmented chord. So in a way, augmented triads, that's what I meant to say, augmented triads are like minor triads with the root lowered. And that's how they tend to function in practice more often. Or as an escaped fifth, and I'll show you that trick in a moment. So when we're doing all my eleven, it's a C sharp minor to a C augmented. The drunken minor chord that we talked about. So if you shift these fingers down and keep the root here, you produce an augmented chord. So all my eleven, I will sing. In fact, we should say that whole progression next time because it's a fabulous progression. Um, but anyways, so that's a chord that you could use in your writing as a leading tone to the one chord if you're in a minor key. Um, and then conversely, uh, diminished chords are sort of like major triads, here's C major, with the root sharpened. And that's why they function like temporary leading tones, taking us to the next chord. Uh, more often you do it like this. And you use those diminished sevens to kind of shift you half a step up, or a whole step, I guess, to the next key or chord. Um, so that's diminished sevens versus augmented chords. And then the augmented chord exercise was to take your E triad, G sharp B, E, and just give it the transformation. So E. E6, E7, which takes you to A, A augmented, A6, A7, D, D augmented, D6, D7, G, G augmented, G6, 7. Now you get to C, but when you get to C7, just flat it half a step to B. that you land on E, not F, and you stay within the big five guitar key circle. E, A, D, G, and C. C shifts half step to B, and then you hit back to E. And you can keep going all the way up to you culminate here, and you've done all the, all the possibilities. And then you can repeat that on this E chord, E, G sharp, B. Shapes will be different. And then you can repeat on the next two string groups, but at least the shapes will be the same. So your E here will be um, B, E, G sharp. Transformation, the stretches are just kind of wicked, and then down here it would be this E G sharp B E that would be your starting E because this is not a triad, it's just one five one. Um, so that's that exercise. Now let's put it, these things into practice. Um, the Beatles song was Till There Was You, so we're really trying to get you to play these jazz chords now. So it's um, F sharp diminished seven. Oh, I never Minor four. Oh, oh, I never saw them at all till there was you. There were times all around, but I never minor four heard them sing. No, I never saw them at all till there was you. F to F seven, which sets up the four. And there was music. Four, and 
wonderful roses down in the sixth chord. Now the G minor with the falling root, and then a G7. Of John's augmented, there will not. That's a really nice part of the progression. Um, I think that's all. There's a little variation at the end with a with a D flat nine somewhere in there, but um, that's the gist of the song in the chart. Um, and then we talked about two jazz tunes that are in the in a modal jazz tradition from Kind of Blue. The first two songs. Uh, so the first one is called So What, and that uses chordal harmony, meaning chords that are built in fourths instead of thirds. So it started with the six nine chord A six nine. Um, we talked about that a bunch. And I pointed out that if you leave the root out, you just have this big stack of fourths. And then this too, if you add the high E. So that's a very much a chordal kind of harmony. And then you have the root here. And six nine chords are the same, whether you shift them up or down. That's an A six nine, and that's a D six nine. Um, so they're very ambiguous sounding compared to major sevens, which feel much more committal. And these can substitute for one another because they both have major thirds and, and perfect fifths. Um, but then I pointed out that this minor chord, <clears throat> which is a, an E minor seven without the ring finger, is also very chordal. Fourth, 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 and then you have a major third on the top. So that's an E minor eleven to a D minor eleven, and that's what so what's based on. So the only place you have two minor chords um, contiguously in in the diatonic series is the two and the three. So when you see two minor chords a whole step apart, you can think, okay, this is probably a Dorian situation. So in this case, it is D minor is where the weight of this is. So it's D Dorian, and the bass line hammers on the low E to A like this, and then goes up the scale. section to create some variety right here. I'm just still playing the open E with my hammer on because I'm lazy. And it's quick enough that you can't hear. And back. And you solo D Dorian, which you know but to avoid that low trap, I want you to focus on the triad and then the high sixth versus the high seventh. So then you can do the whole scale. And a cool move is to do the arpeggio seventh and land on the sixth. Blah, blah, blah. So that's um, So What, and then Freddie Freeloader was the next song. So we talked about your seventh chord building blocks. On the low E string, you have root, seventh, third. And on the A string, you have root, third, seventh. So these are just three note building block chords, and you can play a little blues with these. Five, eight, four. And then when you're starting with the six string building block, if you add your pinky, you get the 13th first, and then the ninth after it. That's the opposite here, where if you flatten your ring finger, you get the ninth first. And then the 13th comes with the pinky. So again, this is 13 and then 9. This is 9 and then 13. And so Freddie Freeliter does those both. It does uh, 13 to normal dominant on B flat. And that's the key of the song. It's like a B flat mix of lean with blues elements in it. Same move on the E flat. Now I'm going to use standard voicings for go chromatically to the 5, E to F7, then chromatically down to E flat, then you do a standard A flat 13, and then sharpen the, that high um, 13, to the 7. Um, and then playing over this, you could, we looked at those blues um, arpeggios, so I told you to focus on the top three, here's your B flat major, with the high D, the third. And just add the seventh, which is um, A flat. Later on, when the A flat chord comes in, just use the same shape. Four chord.
four simple dominant seven chords, but a fun way to kind of shift around over that song. Um, okay, dude, that's not everything we did in the last two lessons, but that's the majority of it. So enjoy, and I'll see you next time.